worst, the worst, bitch. And I think um, that idea of a black monolith, as in black people and black resistance only looks like this, is a product of the society that we live in. Because of course they need to create a caricature of what we look like so they can target that and make sure that that um, isn't what's promoted. Instead of understanding that res if this situation that we were faced could be um, solved by any one method, it would have been solved already. This is a complex situation. It's not just 500 years in the making, it's thousands of years in the making. And in order to combat it, we're going to need multiple strategies happening on multiple levels, striking people at multiple levels of where they are in knowledge of self. So I think the ability for um, somebody to shy away from a particular label isn't detrimental. It's really about our ability to say, can we understand ourselves beyond the monolith? Can we understand black resistance beyond it just looking like red, black, and green, military jacket, afro, and a gun? Is there a way for us to understand resistance beyond that moment? And is there a way for us to make sure that we are doing our due diligence as people who are pushing resistance to cultivate knowledge of self and other people so that they know where they're coming from and that each moment and breath that they take is a political act? And unless we're doing that work to make sure that we are getting our ranks up <laughs> into understanding what we can do to resist the, the white supremacy, let's be very clear, what we can do to resist white supremacy, then we're going to um, become at the fate of the media because then those tropes become perpetuated as divisive or here's what isn't happening for the black community or it's not positive, whatever, what have you, that really takes away from the core message of resistance needs to be had against global white supremacy is going to come in many forms and we need to make sure we're doing our work to cultivate knowledge of self across the spectrum. So, um, Brother David, um, I'm going to let you answer. We just got one quick <coughs> announcement. Um, I'll let you answer and then I'll see if Shalina, do you still have a question that you want to ask? So, okay, and we'll see if we can just get one more question in before we wrap up. So once again, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, this is just a nice little reminder. There's always balance. For, for every Nicki Minaj, there's a Rhapsody. Um, you just gotta look. There's a Saw Rock. I love Saw Rock. Mm -hmm. um, there's Jaciri X. There's a lot of artists who um, are not overburdening their messages with conscious lyrics because joy in the face of all of these things is still a revolutionary act too. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's also critical that people not wait to be fed something. But the beauty of the fact that, and I'll say it again, that the music industry is a dead industry. That's just the marketing tool for the prison industrial complex now. But hip hop is still alive and it's still being produced. It's still out there. Every Tuesday, iTunes got something new up there. You gotta, it's almost like looking for healthy food. You gotta make sure you're going out and procuring it yourself. Because that's a revolutionary act too, to take control of your diet, mentally, spiritually, and physically. Let me just, I'll just add that you also have to look at who's profiting off the music that you hear on these major outlets. So if it's just old white dudes, then of course they're putting those messages out. But like he's saying, and like I've always said, there's there's so much balance out right now. So if so, I don't mind hearing those messages because, like I said earlier, I'm only eating that every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? The same way. I'll listen to some Sky Zoo, Apollo Brown, Torre, whatever, all these other New York artists, or who, not just New York, but whoever, just for that other <clears throat> kind of sound. Um, so, and you have to look at who's profiting in all these areas, whether that be the music industry, film industry, nonprofit, whatever. If it's not the people that it's supposed to serve, and it's not the people that's helping profiting, then you really got to look at that and know it's bullshit. So. Let's, squeeze, let's squeeze one last question in. How do, you, um, how do you feel about the people who are not standing for the national anthem and kids are not standing at their uh, sports games and artists like T.I. create music for uh, scenes with uh, reenactments of uh, uh, white people getting killed the way, you know, the black people getting killed. Like so how do you feel about the, the actions that they took? My name is Monique Glisson and I've never stood for the national anthem. <laughs> No kidding. I, it never did it. So you're not going to stand at the Brown Center? No. <laughs> I just never have felt any connection to that flag. The Pledge of Allegiance, you have seen me turn my back. I, that act of resistance, I, I hate to say it, is nothing new to black folks. Um, to say that, I'm glad 
Kong did what he did. And I'm glad it's inspiring a movement. But um, the media allows us to now see it in a different light. But people have been doing that since there was a flag <laughs> and since there was a song. So I think having a co understanding our cultural continuity and being very clear that resistance has always been a part of black culture always been a part of our story in this country and it's always going to be a part of our reality makes that message very clear um i think moving um forward about how do we look or take these actions and especially with young people them being able to see it in whatever mode is available to them at this current point in time is important and i think the the message that goes along with it is like the killings of black men isn't more or less <laughs> than it has been for the last 400 years what we have now is a cell phone mm -hmm. That's the difference. And we need to be very clear. So when we're having these conversations, it's no different than when we're talking about understanding my humanity as a black person. I don't need to understand my humanity. I always knew I was somebody. It's the white system who has been complicit with this that needs to wake up and understand that this has been a problem. So this uh, ability for us to begin to have this conversation because the media now exists, isn't anything new to what resistance has been like for the last 400 years in this country, particularly from the black from the black point of view. So I think the ability for us to, to coalesce um, in new ways is a, is a product of our new methodology, not a product of new beliefs, not a product of new movement, not a product of new ways of resisting. And I, let me just, I'll be quick, very quick. There's a reason we don't sing the third verse of the National Anthem as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. Right. That was the radio edit version that we've had for the last right. few days. But if you look at even the radio edited version that cut out the part about hunting down slaves, mm -hmm. you still had a song that celebrated and glorified militarism, killing, death, talked about guns, everything we could have condemned this for. And, and honestly, if we're going to have a national anthem, we should look at lift every voice and sing. Because that's our national anthem. And we're a nation within a nation. Um, I wanted to um, share a, a quote. Um, there was an article that recently came out about AT&T's um, CEO. I don't know if you all uh, had a chance to you know, read that article, but I just thought it was really interesting. But the CEO, Randall Stevenson, there was one piece that you know really stood out um, of what he said, and it relates to really what we're talking about. Um, today and it was interesting because he said he had to talk to one of his black friends and this is and this is how it was kind of broken down and it stated when a parent says I love my son you don't say what about your daughter when we walk or run for breast cancer funding and research we don't say what about prostate cancer when the president says God bless America we don't say shouldn't God bless all countries and when a person struggling with, what, with what's been broadcast on our airways says, Black Lives Matter, we should not say all lives matter to justify ignoring the real need for change. Thank you all so much for coming out. Subscribe, bitch.